In this lecture, we'll talk about how individual companies can operate within the global regime as they try to navigate international expansion. Business in become, businesses become involved in international trade in many different levels and they can, they can exercise their strategic objectives many different ways. Most companies first get involved in international trade when they import goods for resale in their own businesses, import from other countries, sell them in the U.S. Businesses may enter exporting through a counter trade agreement, which is a foreign trade agreement involving bartering of products instead of currency. They give products overseas, they get products on the import side. An estimated 40% or more of all international trade agreements contain counter trade provisions. Export agents are middlemen that help companies by handling their international transactions. One of the first ways to do it if you're a small company is to find an agent who operates as an ex export import agent for you to handle a lot of the issues we've talked about in the prior lectures. This graph shows some of the world's largest exporting countries. While China is a leading exporter, the US and Germany are fairly equal in exports. These are numbers from 2011. They're estimates in billions and they're calculated on an exchange rate basis. A trading company buys goods in one country and sells them to buyers in another country. Trading companies handle all activities required to move products from one country to another, similar to an export agent, but the role is much, their role is much larger. They're essentially an intermediary. Licensing is another trade arrangement in which one company, the licensor, allows another company, the licensee, to use its product, its company name, products, patents, brands, trademarks, raw materials, and or production processes in exchange for a fee or a royalty. Licensing is an attractive alternative to investing your own in your own product, uh, your own production facilities in country, which is direct investment especially when there's political instability, uh, political stability is in doubt. Licensing effectively allows uh, uh, operators in another country to produce their own products, but sell them under your name with the certain quality provisions and, and the like being tied to the licensing contract. Large companies such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi use licensing, but this is especially advantageous for small manufacturers. You can be selling your products overseas with your brand and your company name and logo and all that without taking the risk of actually building assets in those other countries. You're probably familiar with franchising such as McDonald's, Wendy's, Subway, Pizza Hut, Holiday Inn, all franchisers. Franchising is a form of licensing in which a company, the franchisor, agrees to provide a franchisee with a name, logo, methods of operation, advertising products, and other elements associated with the franchisor's business. In return for a financial commitment and the agreement to conduct business in accord with the franchisor's standards of operation, franchising allows companies to enter a marketplace without spending large amounts of money. Let's look at McDonald's. McDonald's has expanded around the world via franchising. Although the company will customize some of its meals to the local culture, this menu from McDonald's in Morocco shows the firm offers similar fare around the world. Another way to get your feet wet in international markets is related to contract manufacturing or outsourcing. Contract manufacturing occurs when a company hires a foreign company to produce a specified volume of the firm's product to specifications. The final product carries the domestic, the domestic company's logo and name. For example, Reebok uses Korean contract manufacturers to produce many of its shoes. Earlier, we defined outsourcing as transferring manufacturing to or other tasks such as information technology or operations to companies in countries where labor and supplies are less expensive. Many U.S. firms have outsourced tasks to India, Ireland, Mexico, the Philippines, where there are many well-educated workers and significantly lower labor costs. 
Although outsourcing has become politically controversial in recent years amid concerns over the jobs that are lost to overseas workers, foreign countries transfer tasks and jobs to the U.S. as well, and they do so to the U.S. companies. This is sometimes called insourcing. Far more often than U.S. companies outsource tasks and jobs abroad. However, some firms are, being, are bringing their outsourced jobs back after concerns that foreign workers were not adding enough value and were putting, placing some additional risk on their brands. We also have offshoring as a relocation of business processes by a company or subsidiary to another country. It's different from outsourcing. The company retains control of the offshored process. The company retains control because they are not subcontracting to another company. They're operating a company that they're operating their own business offshore. Companies may choose to offshore for a number of reasons, ranging from lower wages, skilled labor, or taking advantage of time zone difference in order to offer services around the clock. Many countries, particularly LDCs, do not permit direct investment by foreign companies or individual. A company may lack sufficient resources or expertise to operate in another country. In such cases, the company wants to do business in another country may set up a joint venture. By finding a local partner, occasionally the host nation itself, to share the costs and operate the business. They also therefore op uh, uh, split the profits associated with any of the products or services and any of the revenues that are associated with the products sold, created and sold by the joint venture. Another possibility, which has a little bit, uh, which starts to have additional risk associated with it, um, are strategic alliances and direct investment. Some industries, such as automobiles, computers, strategic alliances, are becoming the prominent means of competing. A strategic alliance is a partnership formed to create competitive advantage on a worldwide basis. In such industries, international competition is so fierce and the costs of competing on a global basis are so high that few firms have the resources to go it alone on multi fronts like that. So they collaborate with other countries. Companies that, that want more control and are willing to invest considerable resources in an international business may consider direct investment. The ownership of overseas facilities is what direct investment means. You actually build a building or own some product or buy some company in that country. Direct investment may involve the development and operation of new facilities, such as when Starbucks opens a new coffee shop in Japan, or the purchase of the of all or part of an operation in a foreign country. This is direct investment is, you could immediately realize, the most risky approach. You're putting your capital directly into the foreign or the international business uh, economy. And therefore, if there are political issues or if the business doesn't go as planned, that capital can be lost.